Okay, here we go. Valuation. We're in pre-license. This is, uh, we're almost through with the course. We're wrapping it up now. Uh, next week, we'll, we'll be through. Uh, Y'all think you've learned anything yet? Yeah, learned a lot. Your head's about to explode right now. Well, we're going to throw one more thing on you tonight. Valuation, we're going to look at, uh, let's, let's look at our learning objectives. We're going to learn what an appraisal is, who has to do them, how they're done, what's included in one, and then there's a lot of vocabulary that goes along with appraisals and uh, the loan process that we're going to work on some of that and things that will affect value. You think, well, everything's even though there are a lot of things that will affect value, we're going to look at some of them. You have seven questions on your salesperson's test out of a hundred. This is the general knowledge test. So this is 7% of your general knowledge test. Yeah, I, I remember to turn it on. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I had to check the microphone tonight too because sometimes I'll forget to turn it off and the battery will die. Uh, technology, I'm, I'm learning. I hear our appraisals. Um, it just kind of what we just went over, how we're going to estimate value, uh, competitive or comparative, it's got a couple of different names, comps we call it, uh, we got to learn the lingo. Right. And we don't use the lingo when we're dealing with our clients, because they don't know the lingo. Mm -hmm. You don't say comparative market analysis, mm -hmm. they'll say, huh? Yeah. You say, I'm going to look at what has sold <laughs> around here that's like yours. <laughs> Oh, I understand that. Got to keep it simple, folks. Uh, Got to keep it simple. Starting off, we're in appraisal. So what is an appraisal? It looks like that blue line is the important thing. It is an opinion. And you hear that word? Opinion. It's not carved in stone. That's, this is the exact price we can appraise it. It's going to be $117.59. No, he's not getting that close. Is it? It's an opinion of a trained person. Now, these guys are trained way beyond where we are. Uh, it's 2,500 hours of training before you're actually doing an appraisal on your own. So, yeah, they, they, they've got a lot of opinions by them. Yeah, it's a lot. Uh, but that's what it is. It's just an opinion, and it's a specific point in time. Uh, an appraiser can go back like with an estate that closed out maybe two years ago and now we're settling it up and other relatives are getting the property. Well, they need to go back to where the person died. And an appraiser can go back and get his opinion based on that time. And it's going to be pretty close because what he's done is he's gathered so much information. A lot of it we don't have access to. We can go in and do a, one that's called a, a broker price opinion or our CMA, uh, comparative market analysis. We can just dig up stuff that's on the MLS. We can look at that. Where appraisers, they have access to the courthouse records. They can go in there and they see every sale that has happened. Not just the ones, and they're probably half of them that uh, we don't we don't even know about mm. you know, between families you know so a, a bulk sale or a, some hedge fund or something sold stuff there's a lot of stuff going on that we don't have access to sometimes we'll question that appraiser so why why is it this mm -hmm. well he can back it up three different ways he can back it up and pull it down to a really tight little number mm -hmm. and he can and he once he makes that decision it's going to be really difficult to get him to say, I was wrong. Because <laughs> he's not wrong very often. Uh, it's just, if you could find something, and it's rare that you'll ever find something that's really comparable to what he's looking at, that you can show him and say, you didn't see this one, did you? Yeah, he probably <laughs> did. Or he may have missed that one. Yeah. Uh, we have an appraiser here in this office, and he'll do sometimes three appraisals in a single day. Mm. That's a whole lot of work. Mm. His wife works with him, 
uh, she handles, you know, the looking the stuff up and, and digging all the information, and he's out looking at the houses, measuring. Um, yeah. They're allowed to measure. We're not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We can measure it and be exact same number he had, <laughs> but ours doesn't count. His is carved in stone. Yes, it is this. Um, but he's gonna he's gonna have a really good number because that's what the banks are gonna go by. The banks don't want us saying, "Oh yeah, it's worth this." Mm -hmm. No, because we got a dog in the fight. The appraiser doesn't. He doesn't care what the price is. He gets paid a flat fee. Mm -hmm. So when he goes out and does it, he doesn't want to bump the price up because he's kind of like we do. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, we want to sell for you know, a quarter of a million dollars <laughs> because we'll make more. Mm -hmm. With him, it doesn't matter. He's there. It's a task-based. Mm -hmm. And appraisers uh, now used to, well, 10 years ago, you would have an appraiser friend, somebody you knew. You liked using them, builders especially. They would have an appraiser that knew their product, and when they sold the house, they would want him to appraise it because he already knew it. And you just call him and say, "Hey, we need this one appraised for two nineteen seven, and miracles will happen. <laughs> and the appraisal will come out two nineteen seven. <laughs> wow! <laughs> he didn't even go to the house. <laughs> The market, I mean, we were over appraising and <laughs> under qualifying the people, and those are two bad things to hook together. <laughs> and when it crashed, yeah. all those people call subprime loans, those are the ones that really shouldn't have got a loan, but we gave them one anyway, because the builder wanted to get a loan, they could, they could work it out. Yeah. We could get you qualified. You got a breath, you can fog a mirror, you can get a loan. <laughs> Well, a lot of those mirrors are cracked right. in 2007, <laughs> and the whole thing came apart, and the prices, zoom, came back down, and they probably came back down to about what they really should be in reality. We, we, we slammed down, and then it started. It bounced along a little bit, and then people said, okay, we've hit bottom, and when you hit bottom, you say, okay, I can buy now. Because why is it still going down? Are you going to go out and buy? Mm -hmm. No, you're going to keep renting. Mm -hmm. So once people saw it then, it's just like stocks. When you're yeah. going to buy stock, right. you wait till it, it's called accumulation down there. And you just wait, okay, and then it'll tick up just a little bit. And boom, everybody jumps on it. Well, again, that happened here. They leveled out and then started back up. People start buying again. Mm -hmm but they had tighter credit standards this time. So not as many people could buy, so it took it a while for it to start getting on back up. Prices year over year have changed since last uh, September to this September. Prices have gone up nationally 4.5%. Yeah, so used to, you could pretty much tell somebody, prices go about 5% a year, mm -hmm. and it, they did. And you felt good about that. And you said, well, if you buy this house by 10 years from now, you're probably going to make money. I'm not telling anybody that now. <laughs> because I saw it crash. I mean, the day before it crashed, everything on the news, roses and candy for everybody. <laughs> Nothing's ever going to change prices. And they were saying that. I mean, the Wall Street Journal was saying prices are never going to come back down. That's when you better run for cover. Mm -hmm. When all, all those people are telling you, get out there and buy something, buy something, buy something, because mm -hmm. the smart money's selling. Mm -hmm. And they gotta have the next sucker in line. It's called the bigger fool theory. <laughs> <laughs> they gotta come in. <laughs> yeah. So they can cash out. Because they know it's at the peak. Yeah. And then, boom. So now, I, w I would tell somebody, yeah, year over year we've gone four and a half percent. I can't guarantee you that's going to be this way next year. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know. Right. Mm -hmm. I got my suspicions as to what's going to happen, but I don't know. You know, when you when you really know, as you're sitting down, you're getting your hair cut, 
and you know this person's probably not much over minimum wage and they're telling you about how they're flipping houses that's when you know something's wrong <laughs> I know, right? these people shouldn't be flipping houses <laughs> it's put it's been pushed down that far yeah. and when when they start telling you that you better cash out yeah. time's up because there's nobody down below them the bigger fool mm -hmm. to come in and do this <laughs> We well, spent a lot of time on that slide. <laughs> <laughs> but is it a such thing for real? The, the biggest fool theory? Yeah, that's actually a, a, an economic theory. The bigger <laughs> fool theory. You reckon they're going to be on the test? <laughs> Probably not. Oh, okay. Probably not on our test. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> underlined blue right there? Yeah. That's what you want to know for the test. Oh, I got that. Okay. An opinion of market value and we're going to learn the difference between the words market value price cost and a slide or two by the purpose of a real estate appraisal um, I think we covered most of that just now because the banks want a, a third party opinion that that they're not interested they don't care what the house really is worth mm -hmm. they're just looking at the numbers what is sold around it because they're putting their money out there and they want to make sure because the banker he's not going out to look at the house he's sitting there at his desk looking at your credit report and all that because we've got to have two things to qualify the person and the property well the appraiser's job is to qualify the property and he will look at everything and then give them that and then they can say okay I believe you we will loan based on what you your opinion as a professional appraiser that you've done 10,000 appraisals we believe you used to you just kind of tell the appraiser what you wanted to appraise for mm -hmm. now after the crash all that's gone everything is horrible line, line yeah line. yeah we're gonna walk right down this and if anything's wrong in here uh, we got one right now that um, um, it's on the market I think for 119 and our buyer looked at it he liked it but when we went in notice there's no hot water heater or I should say water heater you don't heat hot water you, you have a water heater that heats the water until it gets hot but people say I got a hot water heater no you got a cold water heater it heats the water put this this in the water heater an appraiser will not appraise that house because of that. He'll say, no, this, this, you don't have an appraiser. I will give you an opinion of value if it is livable. The water heater's there, and the HVAC's there. All these things are there right. because he's, he's pulling all this together. He doesn't have another comparable property over here. He can say, well, it didn't have a water heater either. Yeah. They all got to be comfortable. Yeah, this thing's got to be because when the bank's loaning the money, uh, unless you're getting what's called a 203K loan, which is an FHA, and the K means you're fixing the kitchen. It's a rehab loan, is what that is. Uh, unless you're getting one of those, uh, you can't get money on a house that's not ready to live in. So that's what all that's about. Appraisals sales in fact the foundation of our um, sales comparison approach is the principle of substitution most three bedroom two bath homes of about the same square footage in the same neighborhood same type age could do all these other things don't you think they're going to sell for about the same price mm -hmm. they're all just alike mm -hmm. and you look at that neighborhood you think well all those houses are worth $100,000 each, and you want to put yours on the market for one fifty. <laughs> Why? Mm -hmm. Well, mine's got uh, all these things in it. It's the nicest house on the planet. Probably not. Yours probably just like all the rest of them. And the appraiser, when he goes into yours, he's got a copy of the contract. That's one thing the appraiser gets. He knows what you have contracted the price on this house. Mm -hmm. So he's going to have that contract for 150 and then he's going to have all these comparables 
around <laughs> him, and he's going to wonder what's going on here. Why? Why would you agree to pay 150 for mm -hmm. this? Right. What, what's wrong with you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it would probably, in my mind, I would throw up a mortgage fraud flag mm -hmm. and say something's going on here. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, we, that's one of our duties now. We've got due diligence to protect the public. Mm -hmm. And if we see mortgage fraud, we're supposed to say something about it. See something, say something. That applies here with mortgage fraud. Because that's how we got into this mess to begin with. Mm -hmm. The builder said, yeah, I needed to praise for this. Because in a new home community, and they don't like them called subdivisions. Builders don't like that word. Mm -hmm. They like new home community. <laughs> so they're building one here, and they're going to build another one just like it here. So this one sells, so the appraisal on this one is going to be based on this one. Right. So they've got to keep easing up. Every time the builder builds a new house, he's probably bumping it up a little. Mm -hmm. Maybe $200 or $500 or how fast he's building them, mm -hmm. but it's a constant upward slope. Mm -hmm. And he can, he's not, the builder's not going to negotiate with you on price <laughs> on this house because that's going to slam that one down. The next one he sells, the appraiser's got to look at this one. Mm -hmm. So what builders will do with you is they will negotiate on things like you wanted a privacy fence, you wanted the stainless steel package. Mm -hmm. If you're a really good negotiator, maybe some granite countertops. Mm -hmm. Depends on what we're going to do negotiating in a couple of weeks. No, that's in post license. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> y'all miss that. Y'all can you come. Give, you go here. Yeah, y'all can come. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody's welcome. Um, but that's what the, they've got to justify. Mm -hmm. And that's what an appraiser does, but it's based on principal substitution. If you can buy one next door to it for 100 why are you paying 150 for this one? You're not. Why did they bring in the, the distance that you could do, go to do your comparison? Right, well, take this. Com uh, community right here. I like to be within a half a mile. Mm. Uh, I think the appraisal standard says a mile. Mm -hmm. uh, but in a community like this, probably if you're over a half a mile away, you're in another community now. Mm -hmm. uh, these are, looks like uh, townhomes. Well, maybe, yeah, I see a little bit of grass between them. So these are patio mm -hmm. homes. Mm -hmm. You don't have enough room for even a patio. Mm -hmm. I think that's how they get their name. <laughs> but if all of these are just alike and you're at a half a mile, you may actually be outside the range of these anyway. But a mile, you're at, you may be in a, a, the big dog sleeps over here. You know, there are $400,000 houses up on the hill overlooking the lake. So even though you pull a mile, you still got to look at what you picked as a comparable. So you're probably going to be in a much tighter than that. And they've got a lot of other standards. We don't really have to get deep in those, but it's going to be they're looking for pretty much, this is what they're looking for. Uh, in the same neighborhood, same type, same age. Age, like right now, if it's a new home, uh, he's not going to look at anything over 10 years old. But if the house he's appraising is 50 years old, he'll widen that to maybe 20 years, 25 years. And 50 years ago, they were just starting to build modern type houses. So he probably wouldn't go further back than that. Uh, they didn't have insulation and stuff in them. So mm -hmm. they're not comparables, really. He's, he's got a little box he has to stay in. And this, this stuff down here is pretty much where his box is. All right, we had opinion of market value. Remember that's what it said? Opinion to the market value. Market value is a vocabulary word. And here's how we look at the difference in these three. And I got over here, put the big spot over here. The test writer, they like these kind of questions because they're confusing. Market value. That's what you think it's worth. You think it's worth. The seller thinks it's worth. You're going to do your own little comparison shopping 
of what has sold within a half a mile. They just like the same thing that he's doing. You're going to gather all that information up, and then you're going to have your opinion. I think it's worth I think it's worth $100,000. That's what I think. Mm -hmm. Seller agrees with me, and we're looking around the neighborhood. Uh, that looks about it. They've been selling between 90 and 110. We're right in the middle. We're probably good. Ours a little worn, so we're not going to get the top price, mm -hmm. but we think it's worth 100. Okay? That's what you're going to put it on the market. That's your listing price. Probably, probably put it at 99.9. Oh, uh, it's psychology to pricing. Uh, but 99.9 is what you would put it on the market. I, uh, you show it, show it, and then someone brings you a contract. And then once you get to a two-sided bilateral contract price, that's going to be the market price. That's what you wrote the check for, or the the, the the mortgage company wrote a check. Or actually, they wired the money. That's market price. You got another one called cost. That one's different too. Cost is only um, valid at the time it came out of the ground. The builder built it. All the costs were today's cost. Materials were today's cost at that time. Um, labor, today's cost. And this house was built 25 years ago. Do any of those numbers mean anything now? Mm -hmm. Labor was, you know, $7 an hour for a carpenter or something. Now there's $70 an hour. Mm -hmm. you, the, the cost has nothing to do with today's value. Okay. Nothing. The only time it's valid is in new construction where it's, uh, it's there. Now, these numbers will normally be the same in new construction also mm -hmm. because it costs this much today, and that's what the builder's going to put it on the market for, and that's what you're going to pay. Remember, the builder's not negotiating. So you're going to pay pretty much what the cost, market value, and uh, market price are all equal right here. Only time they're going to be equal. The house is now 20 years old. Uh, cost doesn't mean anything anymore. Market value and market price are all in your head right now. You say, okay, I think it's worth 150 now. Well, you put it on the market and you end up selling it for 130. 130 is the market price. 150 was your value. You thought it was worth that. And cost, it was built 25 years ago. What does cost have to do with it now? Nothing. Unless you were building a new one. New construction. Is cost. Yeah, new, yeah, new construction, your cost, market price, and market value are pretty much the same. And we are just a little bit um, market value. And we've got value, that's what you think it's worth. That's what you're going to advise your buyer or seller on because you're going to run the comparables and say, here's what I think. And they've been on Zillow and everywhere else and they say, no, 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 Zillow says it's worth this. And they'll fight with you. No, Zillow, no, I'll sell it to Zillow. Okay, good luck with that. <laughs> Yeah, sell it to Zillow. Right. Another one you want to sell it to is the tax man. He's got a high value opinion on your property too. I'd love to sell him my house for what he thinks it's worth. Come on, get your checkbook out. Let's see if you really think it's worth that. But it's going to be based on similar properties. We call ours a CMA, and that's Comparative Market Analysis or competitive market analysis, or there's another word, but just know that it's when you are doing it, mm -hmm. not the appraiser. He doesn't do a CMA, mm -hmm. comparative market analysis. He does an appraisal. We're going to see one in a minute. But this will be based on recent sales. That's why you can't go back too far. You were talking about these, the box that he's mm -hmm. in. Uh, He's going to look at, the appraiser's going to look probably six months back. 
because prices are going up almost a half a point a month now. If they're four and a half percent, that's close to half a percent a month. So he can't go back too far or he's got distorted numbers. I like to go back a year to give me a better sample size because you take it that neighborhood we just saw, uh, there may be um, a sale every month in that one, there's so many houses, but some of the neighborhoods there won't be but maybe a sale or two a year. So you, you may have to go back further than six months to get a, a sample size based on the like properties that you're looking at. Is that at their discretion? Uh, not the appraiser. He's got uh, what's called generally accepted account not, yeah, appraisal practices. GAP, I think it's called. GAPE, -G generally accepted principles of appraising. There we go. Uh, Y'all have to know that. Uh, but he's under those rules. And if he deviates off of that rule, like he pulls one that was sold a year ago, he's got to justify why he used that. Put a little footnote in there. I had to use this one because there have been no sales in this area in the last year. And this house was just like this one. Everything about it was just like this one. But he has to explain and justify because everything he does is justified because he's turned it into the bank because it's a federally related transaction. We'll get into that too. Uh, they use pretty much the same information, but more detail, way more detail. When we do one, we don't measure the rooms. We say, yeah, this is about 12 by 15. He'll get it down as 11 and 7 inches by 15, 3 inches. And he'll have his exact numbers. Uh, they're more like a, a surveyor on that. Everything's got to be right because He's signing his name on it, saying, yes, this is what I feel it's worth based on my professional opinion and this, um, not subjective, objective um, evidence. Okay, anything else there? This is what one of yours would look like. When you put one together, that's about all you're going to get. That's about all the information you need. It's a three-bedroom, two-bath in this neighborhood, um, and they're all about the same age. This one, I, I threw some stuff that shouldn't have fit in here so you can see how it wouldn't fit. But we've got here, um, we've got, this is our subject. that We're looking for a value on this one. We don't know what its value is. So we have to find others like it that we can kind of adjust their value to get ours. We never adjust our value, we adjust their value. What, what does that mean? Like this one, um, we got um, our community. Where is it? Here we go, community. All right, this one's in Scottsdale. This one's in Shelby Farms. That was in Scottsdale. That one's in Scottsdale. All right, this one may not even fit in what we're looking at. So we may have to throw this one out. Um, but if it is close enough, maybe it's you know, the street behind it in another community, and it was built like this one, same builder, same time, same everything, you could pull it in pretty easy and use it as a comparable. Um, but you're, you will adjust these, maybe this one's got a, um, I don't see the bedrooms on this one. It's at the bottom. Three bedrooms. Yeah, there we go. This one's got four bedrooms, three baths. All right, this one's a three-two, a four-two, and a four-two. Yeah, so okay. everything about that one just it's about is not really yeah, working. Yeah, that's why it's in there. Okay. I just want, that's why he's in there. So y'all can say, hey, why did you put that one in there? Yeah, it's quite a deal. and out So yours is a four-three. That was a three-two. It's on slab. That's a four-two and a four-two. Yeah, yeah. You see, you you got to put apples with apples. But the way you would adjust the value is uh, here. This is a four bedroom with a three bath. We're missing a bathroom over here. So what we would have to do is reach out and find something else in this neighborhood that had a third bathroom that's like these, and we can say, okay, a bathroom is worth 
this much money, say $10,000. Yeah. This one is um, yes, missing that bathroom. So we're going to have to... Yeah, that's... Yeah, the half's not going to count as much, mm -hmm. but... Um, it, it's, this one they don't have is the half that they have to the half We'll adjust this one's price because of that bathroom mm -hmm. and change it. And there's a, there's a little thing we, we call uh, the CIA doesn't want CBS watching them. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's the CIA, you know they don't. Mm -hmm. CIA, CIA doesn't want CBS watching them. Mm -hmm. The CIA is your, your comparable is inferior, you add to its value. Mm -hmm. So this one has got a inferior because of the bathroom. So we're going to add the value of the bathroom to this one's sales price to give us our price. Now, if it was better, that's CBS. If the comparable's better, you subtract what it was. Like we had um, three, uh, uh, one bathroom. We had a four bedroom, one bath, mm -hmm. and these others are four twos, four twos. Well, those comparables are better. Mm -hmm. So we'd have to subtract the value of that bathroom and come up with our number. Y'all see that? Yeah, I'm shaking your heads. Y'all seeing that? Yeah, that makes sense. See, the CIA doesn't want CBS watching them. And what did the CBS stand for? Comparable, better, subtract. CIA is comparable, inferior, add. So you would add to that one's value to get yours. You never adjust your value. You always adjust the other values. Okay. What about the age of the property? That one, um, yeah, right now, we'll probably a bit older. Okay, year built, yeah, 1977, 07, 05, so, oh, that one's about the same age as this one. Right. That one, uh, right. like both of them are in Scottsdale. That one may be, a, that may be our best comparable right. over there. That's what you're, you're trying to find something that is close to yours as you can mm -hmm. with a sale as close to yours. Everything is close to yours as you can because that gives you object, ob, objective. Mm -hmm. I have trouble with objective and subjective. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's mm -hmm. objective. You can't question it. It's, it. Here it is. It's sold for this and it mm -hmm. is this. I know someone who lived in a house just like that in Scottsdale. Mm -hmm. Built in the 70s. That's right. 1978. Did mm -hmm. they need a lead based paint for them? Mm -hmm. We already did. We got a police one here. That's one of the numbers y'all got to know. Yeah. 1978 lead based mm -hmm. paint. Right, this was the one we do. Pretty simple. There's the appraiser's same stuff. Here's his, uh, the one I say is, which one are we looking Yeah, subject. This is the one that he was coming up with the price for. He wanted to, he had, a, he, his, he had an assignment, go to this address and give me a value for this house. Okay, he looked out and he had to get three other comparables. Mm -hmm. He got, uh, this one is uh, 7th Avenue, this one's 4th Place, 8th Street, 6th Avenue. That sounds like it's in the same neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Maybe a street off. That's what he wants, nice and tight. And then he went through, and, and they're probably about the same age. He's going to figure out. Uh, all right, now we've talked about our CIA and CBS. Here's where he adjusts for it. This one has uh, less space, 1% uh, less. So he's adding $107 to this one's value to give this one's value. Y'all see that? Yeah. You only adjust the comparable. Whether it's better or worse than yours. You don't adjust, you don't know your number yet. That's what you're trying to find out. And if I can say, okay, well, this is worth, uh, well, that's 107926 It's 1% less. So he's adding money. It's inferior. So he's adding. This one over here, adding some there too, because it's inferior. All right, that one's uh, adding too. 
Okay, and then he, all these other things we've got, there's our um, uh, age. And look, they got some little secret code there. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that means. Don't That's why they get paid the big bucks. Mm -hmm. They know those secret letters. <laughs> you see over here on the side where it says sales comparison analysis, analysis right there? They use analysis. Or we use comparison. <laughs> He's really analyzing, though. He can use that word. He's doing it. Up here or down here somewhere, we've got, in addition to the sales comparison approach, we've also got the other two comparison approaches. We haven't talked about those yet, have we? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, the appraiser is a CSI investigator. He's a crime scene investigator. <laughs> Ooh, the appraiser is a, he's a CSI crime scene investigator. You got those letters, CSI. Uh, the, the S is our sales comparison approach. Uh, uh, C, the C is the cost approach. And that's going to be, he will, he will take the value of the land, because land does not depreciate. He'll take the value of the land and he can find what a lot or a piece of land is worth in that area pretty easy. So he's got that number carved in stone. Then he'll have to come back and say, well, this house was so many square feet, some unfinished uh, and uh, function is average, all this. He will take that into consideration and say, okay, to replace this in today's building methods, that's called replacement cost. He will use today's building methods and with that number he can say okay well this house is say a thousand square foot and to to build one right now in this this the, the materials they were using in this neighborhood maybe cost say fifty dollars a foot to build. He'd multiply it fifty times a thousand square feet and uh, what's that fifty thousand dollars and then he would say okay that's what it would be, brand new, sitting right here, right now. This house is how old? 1978, I think it was. Mm -hmm. Well, we got a pretty good bit of depreciation mm -hmm. from 78 to 2007, mm -hmm. I think this was. Yeah. So he's got to figure out how much it's depreciated. And he's got these numbers up here somewhere. He'll tell you what percentage good it is. Well, that'd be down in the, that'd be in the I'm not sure where it is but it'll tell you what percentage good it is. And then he'll deduct that from the current cost, add that to the property value, and that will be his number for the cost method. And his will be different, well, that cost method will be probably different from the sales method, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. And then there's the other method that we use, the I, which is income. We did those on the return on investment. That's what that is. You, yeah. He would take the monthly income times 12 to get the annual income. And then he would, uh, um, let's see, where am I? Yeah, that's income. He would uh, come down here to the, the um, Device. Yeah, the base. Oh, <laughs> Big number. <laughs> and come up with a, an, a, a, right. a rate of return on it. Now, so he would have to, does he use all three in yes. tandem? Yes, that's where we're going. Uh, that's why he gets paid the big bucks. All we have to do is this one. And we don't have to do it well. Really don't. It's just our guess. And our guess is going to be within a bigger range than his guess. See, he, he got it down. I mean, he gets down to the point, point, point. Mm -hmm. But an investor, if you know the current cap rate that an investor will pay for an investment property that's producing income, maybe 10%. Investors say, I want a 10% return on my money. And you can look those numbers up. He's got access to them. He can tell you what an investor will pay for a a uh, single family home in Birmingham, Alabama, in this zip code. Yeah. That's what, that's, he can pull that number up, plug it in our rate, 
multiply it by the rental income, and that will give them a value for that house. That's the income approach. So we've got CSI investigator. The C is the cost approach, where he's going to break it down to, and, and multiply it back out and depreciate it. Land does not depreciate. That's why it's separated. He's got that number. Then he's got the sales comparison number, and then the income approach number. He does. He has to do all three for every property that they. It doesn't have to be he. The appraiser. Thank you, Steve. I got a room full of women here. I shouldn't be so sexist here. <laughs> Sorry. Because <laughs> our appraiser, the, uh, his wife uh, works with him, and I bet she works. Oh, he does, Because in addition to that, she got to take care of the kids, yeah. have dinner ready when he comes home. Yeah, okay. That's right, Steve. Straight I'm, I'm getting straight right up. here. Straight here. Up. It's straight here now. <laughs> He has one down here that we wouldn't deal with called a reconciliation. I didn't, I didn't, I only had space for some of it. Okay. It says this complete appraisal assignment according to the standard rules. He's got, he's got standard rules. Um, what does it say? Market approach uh, reflects the actions of typical buyer and seller. Uh, income approach was considered but was not used due to lack of reliable data. So he did it, but he didn't have really good numbers. Sometimes appraisals will call us because we're in the property management business and say, what are you getting for this in this area? And I can tell him pretty quick what they're renting for because that's what we do. And if he had somebody to call, he would have had a number there. Mm -hmm. It may be this house would rent for a thousand dollars a month if he knew that. But see, he'd need not just my number because that wouldn't give him very accurate information. Mm -hmm. He'd need to call a couple of other property managers, mm -hmm. and they would give him numbers that may be close. And if he got three that were pretty close, he'd say, "Okay, I believe that one," mm -hmm. and then he could run that number, and that would be part of his reconciliation. The um, other one, the cost approach, he did that one, broke it all down, it's on another page. This one's about five pages long. Yeah, there's just a whole bunch of stuff going on there. So he has to do what's called reconciliation. He will give them a weight. I don't know what weighted average is. Weighted average is what he does here. He would say, okay, the sales comparison number, I put the most weight on. I believe that's the number I like best and I'm going to give it an 80% value. And then the cost approach, he probably gave a 20% value for, and he didn't give any value to the income. income approach. So he used a weighted average between the cost and sales number, and it probably was up closer to the sales number, but he has to put that in there because that's their principles. That's the rules they work under. So. Even though everything around there sold for something, he may have to bring that number down because this, he said, nah, nah, you can build another one just like this one for way less. So that would affect it. But the weighted averages are reconciliation. Now what do the USPAP stand for? Um, United States Full Apart. <laughs> uh, where, where are you? Oh, I right see you right here. Mm -hmm. Um, and that house is as is, so he appraising that as is. Yeah, so I think this is, well, I was trying to remember those initials a minute ago. I thought it was a general accepted, that's what that is it's right there. He's pull apart, see? Yeah, pull apart. Mm -hmm. you gonna pull, that's why he's pulling this thing yeah, apart. because he's CSI. Yeah, he is. CSI okay. investigator. Okay, that's how I'm going to associate that with that. <laughs> One of the things they, they, they tell us is don't just teach them shortcuts to memory. You've got to teach them the shortcut to memory, but you've also got to teach them why. Yeah, right. Right. I think we covered that. Right. Yeah, we did. Y'all can do an appraisal right now and reconcile it. You know what, you need to stop playing. <laughs> um, Justin, this just goes, this is a, a little, um, uh, that's not a video, that's just a list where you can go and it tells you just what we went through.
Okay. That was all we had to do on appraisals. Oh. Knock that right out. Are we go home? No, let's do some more. This is fun. I'm learning something tonight. Give me more. All right, so how are we going to estimate these values? There are other things going on besides just that house. Yep. Stuff going on next door. Yeah, what if, a, what if there's a toxic dump next door to you? Oh, here we go. Oh, is that going to affect the value of your house? Yes. Yeah. When they built that community, yeah. they didn't know about that. But then after everybody bought their house, then somebody comes in with a nuclear waste dump that they're going to put. Right there. What happened to your value? What about the ones that had the mines under them? Well, as long as the mines way down there, it's probably not going to matter. That house that we just looked at, that appraisal, mm -hmm. uh, that's the same one we looked at with the survey the other day that had the railroad track going by. That railroad track went to the mine right behind this house. Wow. So there probably were mine oh, shafts. But usually those mine shafts go way down. Pretty far down. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's not going to yeah, affect yeah. you. But when I was looking for houses, I saw where some of the houses had like that it had been mined under. And, and that, you know, so they were, that was the disclosure, okay. but that there was no warranty for that. Yeah, probably not. Uh, those so mines, they were just letting, letting the people know. Um, th I think they're way on down there. I don't think they're they up They have so, a good little piece because they have yeah. to ride a long time before they get to where they're going. Yeah, uh, I don't think they're up so close to your they basement have. that if this mine collapsed, mm -mm, you wouldn't know it. you're coming in on top of it. You wouldn't I've never it. heard of that happening. Mm -hmm. I don't ever remember anything like that. He's way on down there. All right, so those are the kind of things we're going to look at, external factors. Uh, and then we're going to look at the, the three approaches. We're going to pick those apart. Okay. Here's our cost approach. Remember all these yellow uh, highlighted words, or vocabulary words, that you really need to know what they mean. Cost approach is our first one. That's our CSI investigator. He's looking at what would it cost to build another one like this? This one we're going a little further with saying, okay, you are appraising um, the library. All right, well, how many libraries have sold within a half a mile of here within the last year? Probably none. <laughs> How about we could go out another mile, ten, we could go out maybe ten miles and not find another library that is sold ever. But all of a sudden the city wants to sell this library because they're going to build a new one across the street or something. Alright, so they're going to have to use this approach because they won't have any income for it. They won't have a sales approach for it. They'll have to use cost. Now, on the cost, we've got two different methods that we're going to use. One is we're going to build it under current building methods. Let's just say this is a, um, the library was built uh, 30 years ago. That's fairly recent. Um, you built something current, you're probably going to build it with a little different materials. They may have been using... Uh, wooden studs when they built this one and now they're using metal studs. Well, those are little differences, but you have to say, okay, if we just built it back this many square feet, this kind of finish, there are books that he can, she, he, they, they, they <laughs> the appraisers <laughs> can look and say, okay, a commercial building, uh, with, you know, here in the south, we don't need a lot of insulation, so they've got different numbers for different regions of the country. And they say, okay, a commercial building around here should uh, cost for the construction, not the land, that's always separate, the construction is going to be so many dollars per square foot. And he'll have a, they'll have a number that they can multiply and say, okay, that's what it'll be. That's replacement. 
That's where you are adopting a child. Uh, that's my memory technique. Why? We, we're going somewhere else here in a minute. But you're adopting a child when you use replacement. You're going to get another one kind of like yours. Kind of like. Kind of. Kind of. Not exactly, but we're close enough. <laughs> Not. <laughs> you get your children <laughs> Our other method is called reproduction. That's where you making one yourself. Mm -hmm. It's exactly like you. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's exactly <laughs> like you. <laughs> <me. laughs> Maybe I should adopt. <laughs> Let's just say that library was uh, built in the 1800s as a log cabin. You're going to have different cost. You're going to want to build it back just like that one. Where are you going to get these logs? Where are you going to get? Where are you going to get all this stuff? You got to source it all. But it's going to be exactly like it because the library half of back half of it burned off. Half the whole thing had burned. We could have just built a new one. Mm -hmm. But the city uh, council said no. We want it to look just like it was. That's our tourist attraction. That's our main tourist attraction here. We want. It, yeah, they come to see the log cabin library. So we're going to have to build back a log cabin library. That is reproduction. It looks just like you. <laughs> or it looks just like you when you were young. <laughs> <laughs> My kid's actually getting gray hair now. Oh, are they really? <laughs> Some kids are going to gray hair now. Um, when you use this method, you've got to deduct wear and tear. Because it's been here 30 years. Well, we, you know, we probably need new flooring, probably, you know, there were single pane windows at that time. Um, are we going to put single single pane windows back in? Probably not. Now we're going to rebuild, we're going to use the current uh, methods of uh, insulation with double pane windows and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so these things have depreciated. Different from accounting appreciation. Don't get those two things confused. Accounting appreciation is strictly a numbers in a book. Doesn't have anything to do with reality. The building may not have depreciated a penny in actual value because you've been keeping it up. You've been replacing the carpet. You've been, you got a maintenance person that lives there. And they're just keeping it just perfect all the time. So it really has not depreciated. But... Um, your accounting depreciation is an income tax, federal uh, IRS rule that says on a commercial building, you can depreciate its value over so many years. I think right now it's, uh, I think it's 27 and a half years, I think. Why do they get these crazy numbers? So don't quote me on them because they're crazy and they change. Uh, but you can take the value of the building, not the land, the value of the building, and each year take off, what's that, about 3% of its value each year that you can deduct from your income. That's an accounting, different entirely from reality. Okay. So don't confuse them. Uh, then you add the value of the land back because the land doesn't appreciate and you got your value on the cost approach. See how easy that is? <laughs> Just going to build another one like it or you're going to build another one exactly like it. And here's how you do that. The easiest method is the appraiser is going to go to a book and it's going to give them a number. And they'll just multiply by the square foot and they're there. Now, kind of a rule of thumb on land value, it's going to be worth about 20% of your total value. That's just kind of a medium. That's just a, an average lot with an average house, about 20% of the value. 
you got five acres, ten acres, then you're going to need to separate out the value of the land and come up with a value for it. You said the land value is 20%? Usually it's about 20% of the, the value of your property. Well, you can, you can look up uh, what, this is a half acre lot. I can look in the MLS or the tax records and I can find every half acre lot that's sold around here within the last six months, year, mm -hmm. however far I need to go back, but I can get a value for that piece of land. Mm -hmm. It doesn't depreciate, except during the crash, land actually depreciated. But the rule in real estate is land never depreciates. Mm -hmm. So no, no depreciation there, but it's about 20% of your cost. That's just, that's probably not on the test. That's just some of the stuff y'all need to know. Yeah, y'all just need to know that. What we do here is we look at the depreciation. What is this depreciation? What is this depreciation? Is it curable at a reasonable number or is it incurable? No matter how much money we throw on it, we probably can't fix it. <laughs> and again, the land, I keep going back, the land doesn't depreciate. You might have a question on that. <laughs> <laughs> Your curable is like deferred maintenance. If you just let this building run down over 20 years, yeah. it's going to look pretty bad, but it's still got good bones. As long as the termites didn't get in it, the wood's still good, the sheetrock's still good. We can come in here and, and nowadays they want to scrape off the popcorn ceiling. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing you want. I don't get rid of this popcorn ceiling. Uh, so you could cure that pretty easy. Uh, new paint, new carpet, and you may have it curable. But then you may have something that's incurable, like the foundation. All of a sudden we noticed everything is sloping toward the middle of the building where the slab is cracked and for some reason it's down about six inches in the middle of the building. That may not be curable. Maybe. They may be able to, I don't know how they look under there, but they could run all those cameras maybe under there and see, well that's where the mine fell in. <laughs> There's coal under here. <laughs> so you just cut your little hole and start digging the coal out. But... <laughs> to pay for the... <laughs> <laughs> pay for the repairs. Um, there was a, a community down in Shelby County. Down there's a lot of lime. A lot of lime down there. And lime and water don't mix well. So if the water gets in with lime, it'll start eating it away pretty quick. And these houses, they thought was... The foundation of the dirt was good, but not too far under the dirt was some lime, like solid lime. All right, well, once they came in and graded all this off, changed the water flow and everything, and built these slab houses, and you know, you got to have your slope has got to be just right, the water's got to run. You can't have your water run into your neighbor's house. So they've got everything slopes. Well, that changed the water pattern. And the water is now getting down into places it used to didn't get into, and it ate that line. And all of a sudden, one of these houses did uh -oh. this. Well, they can actually fix that with pumping concrete under them. And they pump this. And straighten it back up. And straighten it back up. And it's probably selling at a discount now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Is, a, is the other side going to fall yeah. out if this side's up? So not, do they have to yeah. disclose them once they repair oh, it? Oh, I think that would be uh, something you should disclose. Yeah. Um, but technically, yeah. you don't have to disclose something that's been fixed. Mm -hmm. Like the back part of your house burned off. You went in and built it back and it looks just like it did before. It's not damaged anymore. That's not a defect. The fire's gone. So you don't have to disclose that. Now, this I think you would probably need to disclose because this other side may sink down now. You know this did. What if it, this side's still soft? 
I think that's something I would want to disclose. Um, that's one of the due diligence things. If you know there are soil issues, like now y'all know there are soil issues in Shelby County, if you're down there selling a house that's on a slab, you're going to say, have you had any kind of soil issues here? And they're going to say, mm, no, I don't know of any. <laughs> no, they mind. We have a house in Shelby County. <laughs> uh, all right, we got those two, whether it's curable or incurable. Now we got a couple down here called obsolescence. Obsolescence, think of a, a house that was built in 1910. It didn't have any bathrooms. But along about 1930 or 40 or so, they added a bathroom. They, now they got a five, well, before they had a five bedroom, no bathroom. They went outside. Yeah, they went outside. But long, long about the, right after the Depression, uh, they had a little money and they added the bathroom. On the inside. But that's 1930. This is 2020. Do you want a house with five bedrooms and one bath? No. No. In our mind, in, in, when it was built, yeah. God, that is a wonderful, wonderful thing to have. <laughs> we don't have electricity or plumbing, but we've got a really nice house. Mm -hmm. Along come bathrooms and then electricity. Well, they added that in, but it's still a five bedroom, one bath. Mm -hmm. I don't want it. <laughs> but what if you could take one of these bedrooms and turn it into a bath. Mm -hmm. Then we'd have a four bedroom, two bath. Mm -hmm. I like that. Mm -hmm. I can work with that. Mm -hmm. That has way more value. Is it curable? Mm -hmm. Can we do that for the money that we're going to get back? Mm -hmm. Then it's curable and we can fix it. Mm -hmm. The other one's external to your property. The, uh, the nuclear waste dump that opened next to you, you had no control over that. None. And you don't have any way to get rid of it. All you can do is move. You can't change the external yeah. stuff. Um, I grew up right between U.S. Steel and the pipe mill and the concrete lime plant. It, well, we thought it was wonderful. <laughs> it, was, it was really fun. You could take a magnet and rub it across the porch and pick up iron filings. Mm -hmm. To me, now, that's... I wouldn't no more live there now than I know. Yeah. My lungs are probably full of lime dust because the wind's blowing this mm -hmm. way. Or no matter what, we were right in the middle of it. <laughs> that was... I guess that was external, incurable. Mm. My goodness. <laughs> Here's our CSI investigator. There he is. He, she is. There, there they are. <laughs> the husband and wife, too. The C is cost, S is sales, I is income. We have already beat cost up pretty good. Mm -hmm. We know how to do the sales comparison now, what we've got to look for. Uh, so we understand that one. And in our math class, we did the income approach. So y'all should be familiar with all of these now. Uh, this is the reconciliation that we, we had on the appraisal down there at the bottom. This is what they do. They say, okay, uh, we're going to give a weight of 85% to the sales, uh, cost 10, and income of uh, 5%. There may be some rentals in this neighborhood, uh, and we can get a number to do that. There's also another one called a gross rent multiplier. It's on another slide, but it's, it, it should be right here. Uh, you can use that as a kind of a check on your numbers, because houses, you can find out if you know that maybe there's a dozen rentals in this neighborhood and they're all renting for $1,000 a month and all the houses have been selling for $100,000, you've got a gross rent multiplier of 100. And so 
so your your rent the thousand dollars a month divided by the value of the house so that's a hundred that would go in there you can use that as a, a just a check to where you can say um, run that number and it kind of shows you, you you're pretty good in here but it's just a check it's not one of the the methods of uh, reconciliation uh, down at the bottom a appraisal for a VA loan is not called an appraisal it's called a certificate of reasonable value okay why do you want why do you want to call it an appraisal but they call it a certificate of reasonable value <laughs> Y'all seen this? Uh, just, Did we have to? <laughs> well, I'll go ahead and give you, I'll just skip to the next one. Oh. <laughs> skip two months. Skip two months. <laughs> well, I wanted no, y'all to start. tell me where things, no. what, what we're doing here, what we're going to do, and put the numbers like our income. I'm absent. Uh, Did you say we didn't have to worry about return on investments? That's on the uh, property. On the test, you really don't. You won't have a, a return on investment problem, but you'll probably have plenty of T problems. Okay. And as long as you've got this one, you've stuck up here too, you'll be, you'll be a step ahead. Okay. Because when you get your broker's license, you do have to learn it. Okay. Well, we're not really going too fast because uh, this weekend, you'll be able to jump on the internet and watch all this again. No. Oh, yeah. And no. you can slow it down. Oh, she's talking about, talking about her broker's license. Oh. And she's trying to get, she's trying to get her real estate license. Got to be licensed two out of the last three years. Yeah. So you got a little while to go. Yeah. So so two, two, two more yeah. years. Yeah. We'll, we'll have a broker course. I'm going to hang with you. <laughs> all right. So we know we how to do this. It's just, just a Throw it back in your mind so you can jump back in the T formula in a minute. There he is, crime scene investigator. There she is. I keep saying he. There they are. There they are. Yeah, there they are. Husband and wife. There you go. And they got joint tenancy in their house, too. You know what they do? You know they do? Yeah, they live together and got joint tenancy, and they work really well together. Like, they, they smoke them a joint and start doing appraisals. Yeah, we're not talking about yeah, buddy. <laughs> we got that. Uh, weighted balance, a weighted average. Got that. Um, that's just how we're reconciling. Okay, I think we got all that. It's called a reconciliation. But the CSI, is that going to be on the test? Well, that's the way you're going to remember the three methods you have to use. Yeah, crime scene investigator. Yeah, crime scene investigator, and that's what he's doing. Yeah. She's doing. They're doing. I don't know what's wrong. I need to just go back and just say appraiser. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Because you're going to get beat up in here. Yeah, I am. Y'all going to get Um. But that's how you remember the three methods that right. appraiser uses. Cost, sales, and income. Get me out here. Oh, cost. I hope y'all hadn't forgotten it that fast. Let me jump back in. Yeah, there you go. Crime scene investigator. That's C. Cost. S. Sales. I. Is income. Next question. Income. That's right. I mean, not sales. Income, which is the least likely. Oh, you're right. Yeah, probably the the income because yeah. there's not going to be many rentals right. in this area. Even on the one that we did, he he did. Um, cost but he didn't he said there's not enough information for me to do yeah, you uh, that one no stuff. what's that csi stand for crime scene investigation uh -huh. cost sales cost in, in, in income, income. income. <laughs> see how this stuff sticks 
Here are the rules on the FDIC, the appraisal threshold. Now, right here it says, under current thresholds, residential real estate transaction with a value of a quarter of a million dollars or less don't have to be done by a certified appraiser. You're not ever going to find one, though. But they have that rule. That's the rule, but the, the mortgage company is going to say, I don't care what the rule says. <laughs> you want the I want to see an appraisal. Absolutely. Even if it's a, a $75,000 house, I want to see an appraisal before I throw my money on the table. Yeah. But this could be a question. Where is it required? And it's also it's required on any federally related loan. So if you've got a, um, a an FHA loan, a VA loan, well, in fact, the conventional money is going through the bank. And there, I brought up just what it says. Um, any any or any regulated institution and that's going to be pretty much every lending institution is going to touch federal money in some way mm -hmm. got to have an appraiser so i'm not sure that this that I, i've never heard of any appraisal i mean any mortgage company that says yeah we'll just take your opinion of value for it <laughs> Now they don't they gonna bring an appraiser in and get his opinion of value. <laughs> this is the gross rent multiplier. This I said is just like a check uh, to see if you you know you've got your numbers in the right place. Um, this is just uh, they're selling for a hundred thousand, renting for a thousand, so that's a gross rent multiplier of a hundred. You your property is um, renting for um, I mean, it's, uh, it's renting for $850 a month, and you think it's um, this, you've got this because you've got a bunch of other samples that you've, you've decided the gross rent applier is 100, and you've got one that's renting for $850 a month, or well, you can use your gross rent multiplier from your other sources and say, well, this one's probably worth about 85. It's just a quick rule of thumb, just a quick check to make sure you're on the right page. Mm -hmm. okay. This is important stuff here. Yeah. This is a really good test question mm -hmm. because you've got four items and your multiple guess questions have four answers. Right. So here you've got four items. You need to know DUST mm -hmm. is the acronym for demand utility, scarcity, and transferability. Those are things a property has to have to have value. Demand, I believe you can buy land in Nevada for probably $100 an acre. Why? Because nobody wants to be there. There's no demand for it. Utility. You've got to be able to use it for something. You're going to live there, you're going to have business there, it's got some kind of utility, use, scarcity. That's where our supply and demand, mm -hmm. if there's not much of it, it's going to be worth more. Mm -hmm. Transferability, if you don't have title, can you transfer it? Mm -hmm. No. So if you got title issues, boom, that one's knocked out. So, remember, land doesn't depreciate. These are other things here. So, our test question. Oh, no, let's just jump back to that. We'll do a test question in a second. All right, what's our acronym? DUST. 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 What is DUST? D is demand, demand. demand. utility, utility. 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 scarcity, scarcity. Transferability. transferability. There you go. Substitution principle is what our business is based on. You have seen the substitution principle in, in action. You went to Walmart and you stand there in front of the beans, and there's Del Monte beans for $1.99 a can, and there's Walmart beans for 99 cents a can. Don't be a bush. 
I don't want to complicate it too much. <laughs> Which one am I going to pick up and take home? Because once I open that can, pour in the saucepan, they all taste the same to me. And you can probably look at the back of them, and they were canned in the same place. In China. You've seen that. I've seen that happen on Facebook. Yeah, I've seen it happen on Facebook. I saw that on Honey one day. I had a, a, an old thing of honey in the thing. We got a new thing of honey. It's a different brand. Um, it's the same exact little plastic, oh, uh, a little bear. <laughs> I said, the same people <laughs> yeah. did both of these. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But substitution, if I can buy one for 100000 and I got fifteen to choose from for 100000 and I got one over here for ninety, which one am I going to look at first? Mm -hmm. That's the Walmart beans. Mm -hmm. They just like the others. This house may need some paint, may need some carpet, yeah. but it may not be $10,000 worth. But our principal substitution, we're going to look at what we're looking at to buy and pick the one that's got the best value. Mm -hmm. Substitution is about value. That's a foundation of our sales comparison approach because we are. We're comparing everything that's sold around here. I think this is a good place for break. Yes, it's cold in here. Steve, you can cut the air off. A nice little break there. <laughs> it's almost 45. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. You ready? Mm -hmm. Here we go. Back from break. We talked about the substitution principle. Let's move on to the next one. Expectation. Well, just think about this. If you expect prices to drop, are you going to buy today? No. No. That's the principal expectation right there. Okay. You think they're going to be going up 5% every year? Are you going to buy this year or are you going to wait till next year? This year. Probably going to buy now. What we expect to happen, we act on. Real estate is a good example of it. They, we base our expectations on what we think is going to happen. It's going to go up, we wait, it's going to go, I mean, it's going to go, go up, we're going to buy now, it's going to, we're going to wait. Um, now, expectation will also be based on other factors. Let's just say here in Birmingham, where do you think Birmingham's going to grow toward? Like what area? Yeah, which way is Birmingham? Birmingham's here. Which way is it going to grow? Well, right now, you know, they can build that, um, uh, the, the field over there by the Civic Center. Okay. Well, that's downtown. Mm -hmm. That will, will that, I think they have values around there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You expect them to go up or down? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Did you buy there now, or are you going to wait till after they build the stadium? Now's the time. Mm -hmm. Expectations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Build some Amazon. This mm -hmm. is more about moving away from the town. Which way do you think Birmingham's going to grow? North, east, south, know. west? Probably no. Well, I think south. north. I think it's pretty much. It's done all the growing that it's, it's going to do south, south, south and. Okay, so y'all don't know. I don't know. I Nobody just, knows. Just, what do you project? Yeah, yeah that's, project. that's what expectations based on. What right. do you think it's going to happen? But here we got five different opinions on which way it's growing. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, what if, um, let's see, you could look at a satellite picture from when they start satellites, 20, 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. Somewhere. Look at a satellite picture of Birmingham from 20 or 30 years ago okay. and look at one from right now and you would see where it has grown. Mm -hmm. And that's going to kind of give you an indication of which way it's going to keep going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you would think, okay, mm -hmm. if I'm going to buy long term for 20, 30 years or even 10 years, I'm probably going to get in that growth or right on the outside edge of it and get it for even less because it hadn't grown to me yet. Mm -hmm. That's what these uh, guys that do the uh, self-storage buildings, mm -hmm. they got, they, to which way is the city growing? Mm -hmm. They'll figure it out, and then they will go just beyond that and buy land where it's still cheap, mm -hmm. 
and build self storage units. Yeah, I agree with you. Because the people are going to be moving there mm -hmm. and storing their stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like they took that building downtown and they're making it a self storage. Mm -hmm. It's a huge building, but yeah. they're making mm -hmm. a self storage right downtown. Yeah. Yeah, downtown is growing yeah. up. Yeah, yeah downtown. Mm -hmm. oh, Five point yeah. <clears throat> I live in Avondale. They're banging on my door every day. Let me buy your house. Really? Yes. They're flipping every house on the street's been flipped. But there's Not a everyone. nugget in your area. There's something there. It is. Well, on it's Friday and Saturday nights, we can hear all the bands down in the yeah, Avondale, the park, park, and all mm -hmm. that. I know it's coming. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's That's coming. where they're wanting to be. Mm -hmm. It's there. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple, three more years, one of them's going to catch me just right. <laughs> well, you get ready to go to Florida and start counting out those $100 bills. Mm -hmm. see. Hey, I'm out of here. But it'll be expectations. I, at that time, will think, okay, they've pretty much all been flipped. Mine's one of the last mm -hmm. ones to flip. Once that value is established, mm -hmm. it's probably going to level. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if they push the prices up so fast, the next 10 years probably won't appreciate as much. Yeah. That's what I think. That's what I expect mm -hmm. to happen. So get out while I can. <laughs> But that's what we, we make our, our decisions based on what's best for us and what we think is going to happen in the future. Now, um, had it been, well, we bought the house there in the 90s because it was cheap. Right. And we could afford it. Right. Mm -hmm. That was the goal then. I wouldn't mm -hmm. care. I wasn't thinking about what's going to appreciate more. You know, I can look into the future 20 years and know everybody's going to want to flip this house and I'll be able to triple my money on it. I wasn't in my head. Right. I needed a place to live that I could afford. <laughs> they tend to develop, um, normally cities will develop around some kind of transportation node. Mm -hmm. Think of New Orleans. Oh yeah. There wasn't anything anywhere around there except the river. That every, I mean, we had uh, Thomas, Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson come in and tell us about this. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing I forgot to tell y'all about that story. Okay. Um, they didn't. Um, I remember I told you that, um, or what Thomas Jefferson told you that France had given the deed yeah. to Spain. Mm -hmm. I forgot to come back around and tell y'all. Doesn't that sound like a cloud on the title? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. it does. We don't even know that he had clear title when he gave it to us. We bought it from him. Yeah. We don't even know that. Yeah. But Spain was too weak to come over and fight us over it. So everybody said, okay, we're good. <laughs> also, another part of that story I forgot to put in was we gave them three million dollars in gold. That's all we had. We had three million dollars. Our government had three million dollars in gold. And we gave that to him and did owner financing on the rest of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. So there were two things over here. He got to tell you one story. But typically towns <coughs> grow around a transportation hub. New Orleans is a good example here. It wouldn't be there if it wasn't for the river. Right. Yeah. Birmingham is an odd case because there was no transportation hub anywhere around here. This was just it was called Cahaba at that time. Cahaba. Cahaba was what this used to be called. But there was no river here. There was nothing. No railroad. Birmingham came up because of three things. Y'all know what those are? Mm -hmm. Iron ore, Iron ore. coal, and lime. Those are the three things you gotta make have to make steel. Yeah. <coughs> Only a couple of places Iron in the whole world. Coal and lime. Yeah, that's not on the test. Yeah. Um, you just get why. Okay. Yeah. Um, but that's that's where towns will develop because of something. Okay. We had all the things to make steel here. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. boom. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. opened a steel mill. Mm -hmm. Now a steel mill's gotta have people to run it. Mm -hmm. The people gotta have housing. Mm -hmm. They also have to have grocery stores mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then the next thing you know there's a streetcar line and mm -hmm. then there's a theater and Mm -hmm. It Here just grew you. from mm -hmm. that. Sloss Furnace is still out there. <coughs> yeah. mm -hmm. We got a picture in here on the wall with Sloss. It's got smoke coming out of it. Mm -hmm. 
Well, that's how we got here, but normally it's a transportation is where two rivers connect. Mm -hmm. right, there's trade right there. People are dropping off stuff here and shipping it that way. So this little town will grow up around trade. Look at uh, Los Angeles the, and San Francisco, the whole coast over there. Goods are coming in and then going out. So they got to have more and more people there to handle more and more trucks mm -hmm. and stuff. Mm -hmm. But usually if you can try to figure out where <clears throat> I want to be, and if you're really thinking far enough ahead, you need to be thinking about which way is the city growing. Mm -hmm. I, I read an article recently talking about Los Angeles and was saying that pretty much the middle class, they, they can't even afford no. housing. Um, no. I, I have an aunt that lives in Richmond. And I remember being a teenager, and they were like, oh, our forever house. And it, and it was like high end at that time, but it was it was small. And I was like, I was thinking the other day, there's no telling how much it, if they were to sell it today, yeah. you know, being in it 30 years, I don't know. Much more burned. Maybe burned down now. Half California's on fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they, they're not affected by it. All right, what we got? We got another principle of expectation, fear. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is the other side of our coin. Up here we're in greed. Yeah. Yeah. Down here we're in fear. Those are two sides of the same coin. Mm -hmm. fear, fear and greed. Mm -hmm. Fear is, um, y'all remember Fort yes. McClellan? Yeah. yeah. Over in Jacksonville? Yeah. yeah. What happened? Well, they closed they closed it. it. Mm -hmm. What happened to all those people? They had to, to relocate. They go to the grocery stores there now? Um, no. They, they, they buying cars there? Yeah. They're buying, are they buying mm -hmm. any? They're gone. Mm -hmm. What about all those businesses that were there? Yeah. What about the landlords that had all, the tenants, no telling yeah. how many houses mm -hmm. they were renting to uh, yeah. Army personnel? Yeah. We don't even have to go that far. Look at Inslee and Fairfield. Yeah. yeah, all of it. All that over there just right. all was just overnight, boom. Mm -hmm. just a, the economy fell out from under them. Mm -hmm. Now, do you want to go over to Anniston and Jacksonville and buy a house? No. no. You can get a deal. Yeah, you can get a deal. But you have deal. to forecast that something's going to come back to that area to make it worthwhile. To yeah, the grocery store it. may be closed now. Yeah. Oh, it is. Okay. All your services are one on the way. So you're living. Aren't you you live in Jacksonville right now, and you hear the army base is closing. First thing you need to do is call a real estate agent and say, "Get me out of here before the bottom falls out." Either it's going to grow toward you, or it's going away, and you're going to make your decisions based on the principle of expectations. Got a couple of other, well, three actually vocabulary words here. Plotage. That's another principle that land will have more value if the plots are assembled. Assembled is the process of putting them together. Let's just say you can go um, um, somewhere and they've got already lots are broken up and they're a quarter of an acre. Got a little quarter of an acre lots here right on the street, mm -hmm. and you want to build a, a, a hundred thousand square foot grocery store. Can you do that on a? Mm -mm. No, you're going to have to put some together. Mm -hmm. Now, if you put a whole acre together here, would that be m worth more than just mm -hmm. if you had the individual prices? Mm -hmm. That's the principle of plottage. They're worth more combined. The principle, I mean, the, the process of putting them together is called assemblage. Sounds like test questions to me. Mm -hmm. And then they threw in another one of these words. I like throwing words that you've never heard of before. And they throw them around. Situs means your preference for a site. Is that the same as location? Yeah, your preference for a location would be situs. Now, uh, as right above that is another thing that the appraiser had to do when he was doing his cost analysis 
when he was looking at this land, remember he had to break out the value of the land before he did his approach. Excuse me, mm -hmm. his appraisal. So he broke out the value of the land. First thing he has to do is say, okay, is this the highest and best use for this land? You may have a house on it right now in a declining area that somebody's going to come in here and buy these little lots and put a grocery store on it. So this little old house that's here may not be the best thing for this lot. So the highest and best use for a parcel may not be its current use. And that's where you might come in and plottage and assemblage to put some of these together to make a bigger piece that you can do more with. What's plottage? Combining small properties together to make use of one big property. Uh -huh. And then the process is assemblage. Assemblage. We had another one of those. Uh, condemnation mm -hmm. and um, what was the other word that went with that? Eminent domain. Eminent domain. Thank you. Condemnation is the <laughs> condemnation is the, the legal um, what's the, I mean, the word is just <laughs> gone out of my head because I was here and I went there and I, I lost my thought. Uh, but it was condemnation is the, where the city says we're condemning it, and then that other word was eminent domain. 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 domain is the right to do it. Condemnation is the process. There we go. There we go. Y'all won't, won't ask me questions <laughs> late at night. My mind has got this stuff and it's just moving down the path. And I had to jump off over here and I've got to find the path again. Come back. <laughs> Depreciation. A couple of kinds here. Could be from any reason. They didn't take care of the house. Yeah. Looks like we got that problem right here. It's all in, I yeah, I can see pieces missing off the side of it mm -hmm. there. Um, that's probably lack of Cute. maintenance mm -hmm. and not painting. And they got wood rod. They got to, they're having to tear some of that out. And well, that's put, all in mean, the same situation. Well, yeah, probably all of them through there yeah. are, are in that situation. And they all shotgun houses sitting on the um, Yeah, blocks. little blocks. Yeah. And that probably, when this was built, it was rocks. Mm -hmm. Y'all seen that? Mm -hmm. Houses, they, the, these little parts right here, mm -hmm. they just they built rocks. Mm -hmm. They didn't have blocks. Mm -hmm. Use what they had. I never seen yeah, use what they had. I haven't seen the rocks. I've seen the I've, never, I've seen the blocks. I've never seen the blocks. Well, next time y'all see it, you'll be out in the country probably when you see it. Way out in the country. Uh, but oh, you'll yeah. see that and you say, I saw that real estate school. <laughs> Depreciation and uh, any cause, deterioration is your cause, really. You didn't take care of it. Mm -hmm. Depreciation could be, you know, the neighborhood's changed. Mm -hmm. And, you know, all the houses are in horrible condition and the appraiser says here are my comps yours is not worth anything what you think it is here we got an obsolescence we've already talked about the functional whether it's curable how about our little house right over there not uh, curable. Yeah. is that curable or incurable, <laughs> incurable. probably incurable Ooh, not a whole lot you know I'm looking yeah, at uh, blow it. it's yeah, I'm looking at windows and doors and wood and a roof. And a tin roof. Yeah, let's just go That's ahead. That's probably and, the only thing good, the tin roof. Let's go ahead and knock this down. And and <laughs> what is the highest and best use for this piece of property? Hmm. May not be that house. Mm -mm. Maybe um, it's the land. Well, probably the land. Uh, we talked about the, the function, I mean the optional functional. It may be, uh, say, an old four-story office building. You know, we had a bunch of these downtown. They used to build them when they first built downtown. They were about three or four stories. They didn't have elevators. You walk up steps. They didn't have power. They didn't have plumbing. Now, can we come back in? We, we, yeah, we've got this concrete building. Can we put an elevator in it? Maybe. Yeah. Maybe a little swanky condo. Wow, there we go. You're going to turn this into lofts. Mm -hmm. That's curable. 
<laughs> you'll take that, that structure, the concrete skeleton, yeah. and come in and, and you're going to put all new plumbing, all new electrical, uh, energy efficient everything, and mm -hmm. elevators. You're going to do all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and when they bought the building, they probably bought it for $100,000 because it's got lead paint and it's got nasty and it's bad and every, everything that could be wrong with it. You were basically buying the land and you, they threw in the concrete structure. And now you can make these lofts and so on for half a million a piece. So that may be curable. This one, not. That opens up next to your house. Mm -hmm. uh, there's probably going to be a sign in the yard before that gets out of the ground. Mm -hmm. I don't know anything about what's going next door. <laughs> mm -hmm. As a as a professional real estate agent, <laughs> would I have to tell them that I know there's that coming next door? Mm -hmm. I think that'd be a material fact. So. Pretty sure it would. Uh, anybody. <laughs> progression that moves into your neighborhood what's going to happen to the value of your house yeah, <laughs> Ooh. what is that red 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 progression and regression I'm saying like it, but if people like the agent was like oh here for the hills they're coming what it's not oh, redlining uh, it's uh, a block busting block busting bus 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 uh, bus <laughs> no, well that busting. could you know if, if these people moved in, the uh, house next door looks pretty nice. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 it. Yeah. yeah, it looks like that one's already ready to mm -hmm. be flipped or been mm -hmm. flipped, and this guy moves in. On a truck. Yeah, he, he inherited that land. <laughs> a 54 look like him on a right. truck. Yeah, he inherited that land. And he's going to put his truck and, and his car on. Yeah, he's going to put his truck and his house on. Um, yeah, <laughs> moved, moved right in like next it. to you. You like it. I bet that value over there dropped. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He couldn't give it away. But the principle of progression says that the value of his is going to go up because well, of what's going. next to it. Yeah. But won't that one come down? This one, yeah, that one should come down because of him, yeah. but he it should go up, up because of them. Right. That's pro and re. This will affect price. Right now, uh, we've had three rate cuts this year. Just had one yesterday. Right. Uh, I think I told y'all Monday it was coming. Uh, well, it did. Uh, mortgage guy next door ran over here today and said, rates are down. Mm -hmm. uh, if rates are down, then you can buy more house mm -hmm. because you can, you can get a bigger loan. Mm -hmm. uh, if you can buy more house and get a bigger loan, what's going to start happening to the prices of houses? They're going to go up. They're going up. Because interest rates go down. Mm -hmm. What do you think happened to prices of houses right here? Wow. You couldn't give them away. You couldn't get them financed. At interest rates looks like 16%. How do you finance a house at 16%? Right now, there's, I think he, he told me you can get some loans at 3%. Wow. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't hope he was talking about a... 15 year because a 15 year I'm, I'm okay with that but a 30 year is probably about three and a half percent right now yeah. I don't think it dropped it that much uh, but he was he was so happy he's actually got a, a, a screen sitting on his yeah. desk tracking interest rates every minute of every day cool. watching because if you're gonna go get a loan we talked about this mm -hmm. I told you wait mm -hmm. to at least today mm -hmm. because our son's going to get a loan. Well, you don't want to lock the rate in yesterday no. because he's watching them and he said they're going down, they're going down. Uh, don't do it yet. Wait till it gets on down. Now we think it's down about as low as it's going to go for a while. Okay. So he needs to lock his rate in now okay. before something happens. Right. And maybe they choo, shoot back up. What if um, there was a nuclear explosion and where, where, where are we fighting right now? Uh, some, somewhere in the Middle East, there was a nuclear explosion. What's going to happen to all this? One to two. External things will affect this. 
but this is also affected by a lot of stuff. But you can see what it's done over time. Mm -hmm. Eight percent. And then it went on up, and up, up. Looks like 1978. What happened in 1978? It came down. I don't remember what happened in 1978. That blew that just crazy up. Uh, <laughs> I know somewhere right really along in here was the oil thing where you couldn't buy gas but every other day. Oh, really? Y'all don't remember. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, I'm still yeah. playing. I don't know. Oh, I was yeah. in like 73. Yeah, somewhere right in here oh, oh, was a, the baby. gas thing. Mm -hmm. So that, I can see where that scared people. Mm -hmm. and more money to loan you money. Mm -hmm. But I don't remember what happened there. I can't remember. There's like 80. Between 80 this uh, going out, it's it's showing here somewhere around 5% in 2018. Mm -hmm. And now we're, he said, three, three and a half. Mm -hmm. I don't the know big oil spill have happened right now? I don't, I don't know. know. The big oil, the oil thing, rig, something blew up out in the water. What's on? That oh, that was, was, oh, yeah, that was 2010. Well, yeah. Okay. yeah. And I don't. <clears throat> it, it, it was down. I know that's the last one that's going to talk about. Historical. <laughs> we talked about due diligence and we talked about the clue report at that time. Clue report is where you need to have, you got seven days according to the contract to find out if you can get insurance on the house. Because if this house has had problems, um, I don't see the problems listed on there, but say it's uh, been hit by lightning, you had a fire and um, uh, concrete truck hit it. <laughs> Those are all claims against this property. And another insurance company is going to look at those claims and say, we don't want that house. And they don't have to insure you. Just because you say, I want you to sell me insurance, uh-uh. They don't have to. They're going to look at this and say, no, that house is not one that we want. Also, maybe own the person. Let's just say you've got a conviction for arson. Mm -hmm. You think they want to insure you? No, they ain't. No. Uh, so this is one of the things you've got to do when you buy a house. Make sure you can get it insured. Because if you can't get it insured, you cannot get a mortgage. But even if you didn't have a mortgage, why would you want to have it not insured? Law of increasing returns and diminishing returns. I think just about anything you do to the log house would, would increase its value. Um, we could put uh, electricity in it and that probably bring its value up. Put some plumbing in it and bring it up. Uh, roof might leak because it looks like it's made out of wood. Uh, maybe a new roof, but there are, there are several things you could do to that one to Bring its value way up. All right, this one down here. That's um, Let's just say that's a, a mobile home. A mobile. Wheel estate. The Hawaii. A mobile. <laughs> Is that going to increase its value? Mm -hmm. No. Not really. It's pretty. It's pretty. But I'm mm -hmm. not getting my money back. No. Pretty much anything I can put in this one, I'm getting my money back. Mm -hmm. This one, no. I think we've already gone overboard. Mm -hmm. so it like this. Oh, this okay. Yeah, a lot of mobile homes, the bathroom floors rot out. Mm -hmm. oh, that's, really? a, that's just a real common thing with mobile homes. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you went back in and redid your bathroom like that, I probably should just bought another place. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, just fix the floor. Mm -hmm. Put linoleum back down. You don't need to put Italian marble. <laughs> Just fix it. Back to mm -hmm. Increasing returns, decreasing returns. So I thought, which one's which? <laughs> Sometimes I gotta ask you right after I tell you. Y'all forgot it two minutes later. <laughs> yeah, we covered. We're, covering, we're moving real fast on this stuff. That's why it's on. Video, you can go back and watch it again. Right. The improvement will add to the yeah. increasing return. Up to a point. Mm -hmm. Up to a point. And then over that point, the money's wasted. Yeah, like the marble in the bathroom in the, in the mobile. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
or wiggle state. state. Mm -hmm. Wiggle state. Um, progression is like, um, yeah, like you said, increasing the value of the home. Um, how that the person because of someone, someone else. Their surroundings. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they started. Uh, let's just say um, you had a mobile home on a quarter an acre lot here, and they started building quarter million dollars houses next to you. What's that going to do to your increase, mobile home? Increase the yeah, you're probably going to hook the truck up to it and haul it off and sell that lot mm -hmm. for more than you paid for mm -hmm. the whole deal mm -hmm. because they brought the value up. Mm -hmm. When you pull the mobile home in there, this is the cheapest lot you can find. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is curable. The functional obsolescence is curable or incurable. Or in the it external, curable. Okay, okay yeah. it can be curable or incurable, but the external is incurable. Incurable. You don't have any control over that. Mm -hmm. Functional obsolescence was our uh, five bedroom, one bath. Mm -hmm. We converted the one, one to a bedroom into bedroom. That, that was probably you know just a few thousand dollars, but now I got a four two. Mm -hmm. Big difference between a four two and a five one. Especially, I got five girls in the house. Yeah, yeah, y'all know. I know. I got a wife that she loves the bathroom. Come on, I gotta go to work. I'll just be another thirty minutes. <laughs> well, if you only got one bathroom, somebody's gonna have to get an outhouse or something. It's gonna be you. Yeah, it'll be me. I don't know. No. <laughs> <laughs> we just well, we had it here, but I yeah. probably could have put that with that slide. Out. So curable. Yeah, we got that. When we say appraisal will be done, every time. Any federal, any federally related transaction, if the money is touching a federal something. Pretty much, you're gonna have to have a, a licensed appraiser do it. Oh, you said it right there, Tanner. Let's we'll see, I'll get me back. What'd you the say? Any federally? Any federally related uh, brand, uh, trend? Um, uh, trend yeah, the money oh. touch, and I don't know how money's going to not touch a federally related bank. And that's kind of what the rule said. So that's why I said I'll um, have to be the praise thing. Yeah. 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 Remember they had a, an exclusion there that right. said to a quarter of a million thousand. dollars you don't have to yeah. unless the money went through a bank somewhere. Yeah, but it's still so the apple the Cayman Islands. <laughs> yeah. Interesting thing, Cayman Islands, they're the seventh largest holder of our debt. Are you telling me? Really? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah. And another thing came at wow, well, I'm just playing here. The Cayman Islands got its name from the Cayman Lizard, which is a giant lizard. Mm. And when the people first inhabited the Cayman Islands, there were a lot of them. Yeah. But they tasted like chicken. Oh. Oh. And now there are none. Mm. You can't find the Cayman I mean, Lizard on Cayman Islands. Now unless they have them as pets. Yeah. Pet. You know how they make everything a pet. Take it in the house. <laughs> Or sister's animal. I know. I know. Yeah. <laughs> For the play, this is my <laughs> yeah. oh, support animal. Support right. Yeah. Came a lizard. Yeah, lizard. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got some economic trends that will affect price, uh, and there are four phases. Here they are. Four phases. You got development, stable, decline, and renaissance. Here is Avondale in 1920. Mm. And here it is in 19, say, 70. Here it is in 2000. Ooh, and wow. now, 2020, it, they're it's building houses down there that look kind of like that. Yeah, they are. Yeah, to about two streets over, they're building them mm -hmm. look just like that. But you go through, brand, everything's brand new, everybody's moving in, mm -hmm. then it stabilizes out, mm -hmm. and then it declines. Avondale did that. He did. Declined to the point people said, ah, oh, we can come in here and buy these houses and flip them and make a lot of money because I've been watching HGTV and I know how to do it. Mm -hmm. Got my hammer. 
-hmm. And then that's what it'll look like. And then it'll come back. Yeah, and then it comes back. That's yeah. the that's what's going on in Renaissance. It's in Renaissance, right? Now Avondale is in Renaissance. Okay. All right, where's uh insulin? Um, decline. decline. Still in decline. Still. 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 Mm -hmm. I was hoping that when the police bought that the biggest building down there, mm -hmm. they would at least paint it or do something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. They're in the they're supposed to be in the process of doing some stuff to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I hope I hope <laughs> I hope I I won't live to see Renaissance and Insulin. You don't think so? No, probably not, because it's at least 50 years old. But, but, but you know now <laughs> that the that, that, that uh, business in, in um, yeah, there's probably downtown Ensley. They renovate. Yeah, I, I, it's, yeah, it's I, yeah, I was yeah, sitting there not long ago, and you, the main road there, yeah. all that new, mm -hmm. the, yeah. that looks like From that. the projects yeah. that they, the, that they yeah. tore down and, and rebuilt. Yeah, looks like that now. Yeah. Yeah, they look nice. What's that going to do for the rest of Ensley? Is that going to pull it down? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's going to bring it up. Mm -hmm. I think that may be progression. Mm -hmm. Just but not Renaissance. There, is there well, it's, it's headed towards Renaissance, Renaissance. Mm -hmm. yeah. but that's that will be progression because the one the property next to that's not going to be worth more. Right. So they're going to hang on the property at the same time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Let's see, this is local local and national. Um, some areas are different. Um, San Francisco right now, property values are dropping because they run up too high. And now they're readjusting now because the people can't afford to leave. You're talking about Los Angeles? San Francisco is even worse. Uh, so their property values are actually dropping where ours here are going up. Some cities up, some down, but all real estate is local. We're not really worried about what property values are in San Francisco, mm -hmm. but we can think, okay, those went up too fast. If I were to start going up really fast now, mm -hmm. I hope I can judge where the top is because that's where the sign's going in front of my house. Mm -hmm. Right then, mm -hmm. before it starts it back down. Mm -hmm. going back down. So a lot of people are probably going to, now that Amazon is coming, um, I live maybe about a mile and a half from the middle school and high school. Um, uh, Macadori, now that Amazon is coming, I'll probably see more signs mm -hmm. in the yards. Mm -hmm. I wanted to mention that earlier <coughs> when I was talking about where you think the city's going. Mm -hmm. I think it's going west. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amazon is going to be one of the catalysts mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. makes it go west. Mm -hmm. You look at um, between there and Tuscaloosa. There's a lot of uncharted un territory. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of and what has Tuscaloosa done over the last 20 years? Mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't even look like Tuscaloosa no, 20 no. years ago. Mm -hmm. So I'm seeing that, and I'm seeing this over here. So you know, the, like that's what this. I'm seeing. But you know, over on the north side where Fairway is up that boulevard, Back up that way, they're putting the Amazon back up that way, okay. also. Yeah. Where? Back off oh, that back Carey, back Carey Hospital? Off that boulevard back, like you go oh, up towards okay. um, Collegeville area. Yeah. They're putting oh, the Amazon okay. back that way, also. I don't, I don't know, know if it's a uh, shipping area or what they take, you know, oh, this the airport. They're going to yeah. put they're, they're putting the Amazon out that way. A distribution center or okay. something back up then, okay. in that way. And see, they're trying to renovate all that in that area, so that's why that I see it. Yeah. 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 And that's in decline. Yeah. That's in decline. But it's kind of in that renaissance phase now, though, isn't it? Because a lot of those houses, they they no. go. Yeah, we got one over there. there. We've had on the market for three years. Yeah. 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 Oh. Uh, mm. uh, yeah. They still yeah. Like yeah. On. No, they're not. In, they're not in. They're not in uh, renaissance at all. No. Now another area that I think. If you were looking long term, that new interstate they just put in. Yeah. Well, it just kind of came and stopped. So there's, there's mm -hmm. nothing between like. Um, are you talking about the one uh, going to Tennessee? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I was that that exit? Uh, Pain. Yeah. Pain. Pain. Yeah. Pain. Pain. yeah Pain. That exit right there. Right. Mm -hmm. um, there right. wasn't anything between there and yeah. way on it. Just nothing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then they put that interstate up it there. Did it up. If. The, 
if you had money and you're thinking long term, you need to go up to where the intersections are, like mm -hmm. where Cherry Avenue. Yeah, you know, I know where that is. Mm -hmm. Right there. Be buying right. any of those corners. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because there's going to be, gonna be something want to go there be as soon as there are enough people there. Mm -hmm. a, wall, a Walgreens or a something. Yeah. Yeah. That's where the family dollar dollar yeah. general. Yeah, those places they pop, them pop up everywhere. everywhere. All right, this is something we need to spend just a minute on. Okay. Or ten or some minutes. Mm -hmm. Because this is a really good test question. Okay. You got supply and demand. And they can ask you supply and demand in a lot of different ways. So you gotta get the factors straight in your head. Mm -hmm. And to do that I created a little mental picture. Mm -hmm. Our mental picture is we've got a construction worker. See him standing there with his little tool belt on? Mm -hmm. To him. We don't have a lot of women's construction oh, workers yet. <laughs> but we got we got a we got a little construction worker standing there with his tool belt. Mm -hmm. You got a hammer and he picks his hammer up and gets a golden nail. Oh my and starts banging that hammer against the golden nail and it drives into the White House. Ooh. Went right past Donald Trump. Mm, I know he did. Right straight on into the Federal Reserve. Mm -hmm. Those are our supply factors. That's four of them. Mm -hmm. Our construction worker is the availability of labor. If you don't have anybody to build the houses, you're not going to have a supply of houses. It's true. Remember we had a little issue here about, uh, I don't know, 10 years ago when they tried to run all the Mexicans out? Mm -hmm. They passed the uh, laws to, in fact, if I rented to a Mexican, they'd put me in jail. Mm -hmm. Whoa. That doesn't, they said they wanted them to self-deport, self deep. Deport. Yeah, deep deport. Deport. they wanted them to get out of here. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine how many crops wilted in the field that year? Sure did. Because they was the only one every last year that was Because they were coming up here picking them up. Mm -hmm. Right up here. Oh, right up right up going around. Who's the basic labor force on home construction? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. What do you think that did to the supply of houses we we couldn't build them fast yeah. enough then? Mm -hmm. So that hurts supply, availability of labor. Mm -hmm. Another thing that hurts supply is the cost of the materials. Mm -hmm. Remember after Hurricane Katrina, mm -hmm. you couldn't buy a sheet of plywood or, or sheet rock. It was awful. Yeah. You couldn't buy it. Mm -hmm. If you could buy it, you couldn't afford to use it as construction material. Mm -hmm. So that affects supply. Next thing you've got is the White House, which is uh, this, uh, government policy. Government policy. Uh, one of the government policies is you can deduct your interest on your home loan from your taxes. Mm -hmm. That's a government policy. Mm -hmm. That's designed to get people in houses. Mm -hmm. Buy a house, deduct the interest. And a lot of people made that decision on that law. Mm -hmm. Next one is physical policy, and that's not spelled like you think physical is. It's physical. Mm -hmm. uh, physical. Mm -hmm. That's monetary policy. We just talked about interest rates. Mm -hmm. That's monetary policy. When the Fed drops the price of money, rent on money, and that's what that is, when they drop that price, we got more money to play with. Mm -hmm. So we can buy more uh, building materials, pay the labor. Those are our supply factors, four of them. Get them straight in your head. Construction worker, labor, mm -hmm. golden nail, cost of materials, into the White House's government mm -hmm. policy, mm -hmm. on, on, drives on through to the Federal Reserve. Fiscal. That's a fiscal policy. Money. Money, money policies, four factors there, supply. Mm -hmm. Now on the other side of our coin, we've got demand factors, supply and demand. Demand factors, we've got three people standing there. We've got a baby 
that's holding hands with a old person <laughs> who's holding hands with an unemployed person. Uh, and they got time, they're standing there, they don't have anything to do, they just stand and hold hands with the old person mm -hmm. who's holding, they may be holding the baby. Mm -hmm. And then, on that, so we got three people. To get a mental picture, a good mental picture, you've got to have connections. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just like our hammer, all this, we had connections all the way down. Here we've got connections, they're touching each other. Mm -hmm. Holding the baby or holding its hand, the baby's connected to the old person. Because mm -hmm. mom and daddy are both out working. Mm -hmm. well, Don't have yeah. money for daycare. Grandma so yeah. grandma or grandpa, mm -hmm. see I'm, get, I'm learning, grandpa <laughs> may be holding the baby. Maybe. Uh -huh. And then this unemployed person over here, yeah. and you got to reverse their role. Because the unemployed person has time to stand here. But the demand is based on employed people, employed rate. You got more people working, there's more demand for housing. Right. So our factors here for demand, the baby is the population growth. If we're adding more people every day, you think we're going to need more houses? Mm -hmm. That's a demand. You've got uh, the old people, that's the demographics. Think about the money people have got, the assets they've got. If they don't have anything, they can't buy anything. Right. Mm -hmm. So your demographics are income and all these other factors that uh, the old people all have. Mm -hmm. And then the employment rates, that's the number of people or the percentage of people that are working. Um, and we never hear it as employment rates, we always hear it as the unemployment, unemployment rate. Mm -hmm. So that's why I have the unemployed person there. That's the number we hear, and that's the person who's got time to stand there too. Mm -hmm. So if a lot of people are working, more demand for more houses. Okay, mm -hmm. now, they will give you a test question. They love this one because this one is easy to confuse. You've got four that we've built a mental picture of, and we've got another separate three over here we built another mental picture of. They're going to say, which of the following is not a demand factor? And they will list all three of these and then pull one of, pull one pull of these out. Mm -hmm. And you will look at that question for 15 minutes. Uh, <laughs> you know you know the answer, but you can't kind of think. I you just did. can't imagine how I'm going to remember this. You did it. You did it. No, I didn't see that one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> She's glad she didn't yeah. see it now. But, but what I did, I wrote all that down on my cheat sheet mm -hmm. once I got there. So oh, if it showed so up, I was okay. <laughs> That's what I did. Um, well, they could say which of the following is not a, a, a supply factor. And they'll give you three of these and then bring one of the demographics. That sounds like it ought to be up here. Hey, yeah, that sounds good. What does demographics mean? Uh, I, I'm going I'm to pick that one. <laughs> That's how they get you on this one. You gotta have this is a, just a memory yeah. technique. Mm -hmm. All right, let's look at this. Here's your test question. Employment rate. Supply factor. Yeah. I remember how I told you to look at these. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Get rid of that word. And mm -hmm. the ones that and are which of the following are supply factors? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can, I can, I can remember my my mm -hmm. construction worker. There he is. Mm -hmm. The golden nail is right here, and there we skipped right over White here. House, went mm -hmm. to the Federal Reserve. So there are my three supply factors. Mm -hmm. So the one that's not on that list is this one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. We do things called the CMA. We've already talked about that. Uh, we know what it is. It's based on the sales comparisons. It's not an appraisal, and you cannot call it an appraisal. 
It may have the exact same number the appraiser and his wife and his cousin got. <laughs> Can and they like this one too. Can you do an appraisal? No. 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 Right, our next session on estimating value. You're going to see we we're we're covered. They their outline. Some things relate to each other and they'll have it in a couple of places in the outline. Here we've already had this in one part of the outline tonight. See some things we've already talked about. Didn't we talk about these? Yeah. yeah. Value, that's what you think price is what they wrote to check for and cost is what it costs to actually build it which is no relationship to today's Price or value. A CMA, sometimes you'll get um, hooked up with a, a bank or a hedge fund or some other big money group that um, ends up with houses. They may foreclose a hundred houses here in Birmingham all at once. I, they don't want to send an appraiser out to do a hundred houses because he's four hundred dollars at least she's four hundred dollars at least mm -hmm. maybe five mm -hmm. you can do a it's called a BPO which is the same thing as a comparative market analysis they just call it a broker price opinion you don't have to be a broker to do it you just have to have access to a computer and look up comparable sales and they'll pay you about $50. But you don't even go to the house. You just sit there at the computer and they say, they give you a list of properties and you pull up that one and you go do some comparables and uh, write a little report. This is comparable, this is comparable. Uh, it should be within this range. And you do another one, another one, another one. All right. They only had to pay $50 to get a pretty good idea of the value. What's the purpose of them doing? doing Saving that money. They don't want an appraiser to charge them four hundred dollars to do what they can get you to do for fifty. But I'm saying, other than monetary, how is that beneficial to them? What is that they're doing that in low of the and the, the, the appraisal? appraisal? But they won't have just you because they don't know you. You may have done a bunch of them for you, so they're gonna have two or three people, at least two, probably three, that they'll say, "Do me a BPO." Uh, they spent $150 and they've got That's three independent saying. people that lay this value in front of them saying it's worth 100 mm -hmm. She said 95 you said 97 you said 103 mm -hmm. They said, okay, we're right there. Yeah, they're just, we, they, that'd give them a close enough range where the appraiser would have spent four hours and four hundred dollars and give them that long detailed thing. Okay, so what do they do with that information? What what is they the will put it on the market then. Oh okay. Okay. That's what they're gonna they're gonna then you may have a deal with them to do these BPOs and if you do enough of them do a really good job of it, then they'll give you some listings. Well they just got a hundred docs on here. They got somebody to sell them. So can can a real estate agent do the broker price opinion or just a broker? No, the, any any licensee can do it. Okay. They, they call it a broker, but anybody can do it. You know, in fact, the broker's not going to do it. Mm -hmm. But that that BPO is not used in a financial institution. No, okay. no. Okay. They're getting it for they're trying to save money. Right. On each determining the value. And this is the loan officer. Yeah, the bank. Well, well it may be uh, Wells Fargo mm -hmm. or, or somebody right. that, you okay. know, like, they foreclosed 100 this month. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they, they need somebody to first secure the properties. Mm -hmm. They're going to send somebody out there to make sure it's locked up, nobody's in it, that kind of stuff. Get a couple of pictures, mm -hmm. and then they're going to go to the BPO level, and they're going to get two or three opinions, mm -hmm. and then they're going to give it to a real estate agent. Mm -hmm. And I, I've never figured out how you get in that little click. Mm. We've never been able to crack into that. But I think if you did get into it, it'd be a good steady source of business for you. So this, it's actually just an easier way for the banks to get um, informed information on the property without having to spend 
the whole four hundred dollars on real estate. Whereas if I'm loaning you money, I want a real real estate person to yeah. tell me what I'm loaning. Okay. Yeah. Well, okay. y'all did the BPOs, and then they gave maybe you the listing on it, right? Okay. Because you already know a little bit about the property. Yeah, and it's an area you would work, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they said, "Okay, sell it for us." You get a contract on okay. it. Um, whoever's going to loan the money to that buyer is going to send an independent an appraiser, appraiser. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody, and they can't pick an appraiser. Okay. Right. Well, they have to. It's a, a list. Okay. You take the next name on the list. Gotcha. Okay. That's a BPO. Okay. And here's a little article on: Is it a comparative market analysis of broker price opinion or appraisal? Okay. And pretty much the top two are the same thing. Mm -hmm. Appraisal is just way more detailed. We talked about this, cost, sales, and then here there is CSI investigator. CSI investigator, and look at there, there's a license. Office of Real Estate Appraisal. Real Estate Appraisal. He's got a certificate that says he knows these things. Let me take a break. The oh, air, the oh, air. Oh, got oh, my oh, whole body. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sales comparison. I think we know what that is now. Uh, and this is the little thing I did about the appraiser, who who they are, what kind of training they have. Um, there's an appraisal, which we have seen that already. Cost approach. I believe we've seen this slide as well, mm -hmm. so we don't have to spend much time here. Uh, got this one too. Mm -hmm. Cost approach. Got it? Let's go to our next section. Competitive, comparative market analysis. Now, how do we select them, how do we adjust? I believe we've seen a lot of this already too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, there it is. I talked about it earlier, but I didn't have the slide there. Yeah. But the CIA doesn't want CBS watching them. They don't. Comparable is inferior. You add to its value. You never adjust your value. It's always the comparable's value. And if the comparable is better, then you subtract from its sales price. Never adjust your subject. Um, okay, we've already got that. Now, here we go. Adjusting comparables. One way to equalize is by square foot values. I particularly like this method. It kind of levels it if they're all alike. And we've got one with an extra bedroom that may be an extra 150 square feet, and I got a value per square foot. That's pretty easy math right there. You're just adding the square footage for the bedroom. So if we've got six similar homes in this neighborhood that have all sold between $95 and $100 per square foot within the last six months, our probably neighbor, our house is probably going to be worth somewhere between 95 and 100 mm -hmm. per square foot. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be $200 a foot, mm -hmm. not going to be 50. Mm -hmm. You've got a, a tight little range. Mm -hmm. And that's just your opinion. Yeah. Even when the appraiser goes out there and does it, it's still his opinion of the value. Now, once somebody writes a check, now it is actually the price. Not mm -hmm. value, but Price. Matching quiz here. Um, I'll let y'all take this home and okay. do that. Okay. Um, I think I've got Can we have the big one? Um, do you have a big one of it? I guess it's in our book because it's so little. Well, you can on go on the website yeah. and you can download the PowerPoint. Yeah. And every everything is on that yeah. PowerPoint. I just I just loaded this up. Up, I think. Last night I reloaded it. Okay. Alright, let's look at a couple of questions here. Okay. 
except. Yeah, be careful with those words, not except. You got to have scarcity. Oh, transferability. Okay. And demand. Demand is different transferability. Oh, okay, well you, I, I like the way you picked them apart. That's the way you should be doing it. I know that one's there. I know that one's there. I know that one's there. Right. The process of elimination. They had another D word. Mm -hmm. Got to miss you. Mm -hmm. It was the man. Mm -hmm. Yes, it was the man. See, they, there's the D we were actually looking for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But they put they the threw another one here. Is the first one you're looking down there. Mm -hmm. uh, D U S T. Mm -hmm. That must be the one that's not on there. They're challenging. Now we're not going to do the math, just, just look at what they're asking you. Okay. And so what would be the value if the appraiser used a depreciation rate of 30%? Does the mm -hmm. land depreciate? No. 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 But they threw that in there for you, so yeah. you can add that 40 to the 160 Yeah. Mm -hmm. to challenge you. Mm -hmm. So we're really concerned with the 160 30% right. of the, the 160 value. Yeah. yeah. 30 percent of that as it, it's depreciated 30%. Mm -hmm. um, we could do two steps and multiply by 30 or we could say uh, 100 minus 30 and multiply by 70%. Yeah. And that would be the, the, the current value. Which um, I'm just looking at the numbers. Uh, if it's gone down from 160, I'm pretty sure it's not that one. Right. Uh, and these two look a little shy so, of that. I can multiply three times 16, it's roughly 45,000 off of that. So I'm looking for a number around 120. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that that's what I would, I'd, I'd get my calculator out and make sure that I wasn't just seeing things. But a lot of this process of elimination and just seeing what you've got. Yeah. Okay. Which the following does not apply to a definition of market value. Market value is the average price of property will bring both buy and sell must add without undue pressure. Pay must be made in cash or its equivalent. Which does not. Yeah, and there's your word not. Don't let them trip you up on not. They tie you a knot to that word. Alright, go back to what I told you. Take that word away. Should the buyer and seller both be well informed? Should. Yeah. Uh -huh. Market value is the average price that a property will bring. What yeah, is market value? value? What you think is worth. It's your opinion of it. Yeah. So I'm pretty much guessing that that may be your answer, but I'm going to read the other two anyway. Mm -hmm. yeah. Both buyer and seller must act with Undue, without undue pressure. Well, that's in our contract. Mm -hmm. uh, contract law says so no duress. So not going to be that one. What? Uh, oh, okay. Payment must be made in cash or its equivalent. Yeah. Oh, cash or its equivalent. Okay. Yeah, or its equivalent. <laughs> cash or its equivalent. Okay. I'll put me off. That would put me off. So you're right. Two would be that. Yeah. That's not the average price. Market value is your opinion of the price for right. this property, not the average price. Right. That's what you think this one, this specific property is worth. Specific. Yeah, specific. <laughs> uh, Y'all not going to have an RI, but let's do it anyway so we can just brush up on our math. <laughs> <laughs> annual net income, or annual, so they've already done the work for us. We don't have to multiply the month times 12. They've given us 20,000 is going to be results. Right. Owner realized a 9% return on their investment. Rate, 0.09.
It's just a math problem there. Yeah. The mm -hmm. 20,000 divided by nine. 0. 0.9. Yeah, I'll be I'm going to guess it's that one. It's uh, three. Three. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I was I was just multiplying the nine times the two, and they got me. They got you good. They did. They got me on that with it. But I'm, I'm that way. I'm going to read it too quick, and I'll miss words. And that's what I want to stress to y'all. Every word in there is there for a reason. You'll have anything. That would have me off because I would have been trying to do the... Uh, we're going to put 20 in the calculator, 20,000 in the calculator, divide button, and 0 .09. Right. And it's going to give us one of those numbers. And it looks like this one, just my guess, just an off, off the cuff guess here, it's going to be one of these because that's where you may have put your decimal place in the wrong place. Because it's 0.09. So I'm going to bet it's one of these. And they're getting a 9% return, it's be zero point and the income's 20,000. It's just going to be math. Mm -hmm. yeah, 20,000 divided by 0 0.09. There it is, and it is. We didn't do it. I didn't, I didn't care one more step. It was three. Three, it was mm -hmm. the third one there. Yeah, yeah so three. if you had here, if you had did 0 0.9, it's, it's probably that one. So they'll give you the opportunity to put your decimal place in the wrong place and still do everything right. Right. Yes. <laughs> it's 39 degrees outside. It probably is. <laughs> we can make it snowed in. We can finish the rest of the class tonight if we get snowed in. And y'all be through. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Because y'all probably be asleep by three o'clock. Substitu Substitution. You look at four similar houses for sale in the same area and choose the house with the lowest asking price. Yeah. You're probably oh, basing your decision on the principle of your. That's what I would go with. Substitution. That's what we talked about. Mm -hmm. It's not highest and best use. That's what the appraiser's doing when he breaks out the land cost. First thing he says, what is the best use, highest and best use of this property? And then contribution, I don't believe we, we did talk about, about that. Conformity. And conformity. Mm -hmm. uh, conformity. We could say, it. we could relate conformity to progression and regression, but I don't think we even use that word there. Mm -hmm. I do the room of this subdivision which the we sold the last line of subdivision from which I first did. Therefore, she had sold the first line of the first line of the principal of supply and demand. And it is. Do you, the, I mean, for four. Yeah, the demand, when it had a whole bunch of them, mm -hmm. principal substitution would have kicked in if there were different prices. But eventually, all yeah, of them yeah. sold out, and there's only one left, and I want to live here. I got to take this one. And I'm, I know I'm going to pay more. I was a post office. Do you sell many of those? No. no. Probably not going to use the um, and there's sales comparison, but there's no income the on there. The Post rental. office been losing money yeah. for years. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, market yeah. data yeah. approach. I don't remember us talking about market yeah. data approach. It sounds good. It though. does. It mm, sounds like that. Mm. Yeah, that looks like a real estate word. <laughs> Locational obsolescence. Locational obsolescence. <laughs> Mm. Obsolescence. So that means you. Locational though. So that's why I thought three. Number two. I'm with you on, on that. Well, look at the others. They're specific to the property. The location. Oh, okay. okay. That's the only one that's. Only yeah, general. general. Yes. Okay. This is. Termite damage on that particular Specific to it. Nothing to do with the location. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. That's the same thing. And the architectural design. And, yeah, all that 
specific to the property, but zoning that changes the game. Because the last lessons was all from all the following except. And inharmonious land use in the neighborhood. I dated kids. I dated kids. Wouldn't have anything to do with economic obsolescence. Uh, I think it did. I will take out our word except. Economic obsolescence is oh, okay. what? Okay. Ever zoning. Um, oh, that could be. Cities, you know, cities, cities moving out. Moving out, yes. Land use in the neighborhood. Um, in, in harmonious land. Uh, in harmonious, they don't usually use that word. They usually use this one. Homogenous. Homo, yeah, homogeneous and non-homogeneous. Alike, the word homo means alike, and non is not alike. That's... you. I don't think I've ever seen that one used. But this one is not, it's not what's that got to do economic, economic, with the kitchen? Right. Economic obsolescence is something that's going to be external mm -hmm. to that property. The building only? We've said land does, does not depreciate. I've said it four times. Mm -hmm. Now you got how, to how, how could it be four? How could it have been four? Could it have been four? Uh, the net income of the building. Uh, remember, I said you've got two kinds of depreciation. One is the actual depreciation because the land is the building is losing value because you're not keeping it up, mm -hmm. and then you have accounting. Depreciation, okay. where it's a, that's a tax depreciation that has nothing to do with the condition of the building. So, depreciation generally applies to the building. We're not interested in this. Right. We're we're not tax people. We're not going to give them advice on that. Uh, and you know, it's not the land can't. So it can't be both the land and the building. So it's got to knock those out. Uh, market data, wouldn't that be our sales comparison approach? The data yeah. sale. Where we're looking at other properties that have sold around here. Yeah. We're not looking at depreciation. The date of the sale. Uh, the date of the sale would affect it. The amount of the real estate taxes, what's that got to do with it? Yeah. And the cost of replacement. Well, we're talking about a market yeah, data, which is sales comparison. The cost of replacement will be in the yeah, cost sales. approach. Sales the CSI. Mm -hmm. I mean, the. Yeah, mm -hmm. CSI. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's some more questions for you. Um, unless y'all want to stay late. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some the answers to the. Earlier yeah. part where we had the oh, matches. Okay. Oh, um, two. Let's do the matches. All right, how did we do tonight? Do we know what an appraisal is? Yes. We do. What's included in an appraisal? CSI. So we could do C is sales. sales. I mean, C is, C is cost. It's the sales, sales and I and I income, income approach. Mm -hmm. That's what's included. Appraisal vocabulary. We got a bunch of new words yes. on vocabulary yes. in this. And vocabulary, I'm just telling you, don't know the vocabulary, don't go take the test. Mm -hmm. You've got to, you've got to have those words uh, square in your head and know what the word is and not one of their fake words. Right. Ones that throw out there with sugar all over it. You say, oh, that'd be so good. That's what I'm saying to me. I understand. Uh, and what will affect value? We've talked about several things that would affect value. 
the property itself, the condition, exterior to the property, that can affect it. Uh, supply and demand will affect it. Uh, interest rates will actually affect it. Um, Policy going go Yeah, so all these, there's a lot of things that's going to affect value. We covered a lot of stuff tonight, but yeah. I believe we got it all down and we did it and we've got, looks like seven minutes. Did yeah. you all give us? I know. Right. We're finishing seven minutes and I, I think we did good. We did. I think 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 we did. I